all want extraordinary experiences. The reason people travel is to have an extraordinary experience. The problem is, as we heard this morning, that the experience of choosing travel, booking travel, really sucks, right? It's not a great experience for most people. So that experience gap is a problem. It's a problem because customers get frustrated. They start changing providers, right? It's not an, it's not an inclusive experience that allows everybody to have a great time. So I've been measuring brand activity for around 20 years to understand what makes an experience extraordinary. And what I'm going to show you today is an algorithm, a set of five steps you can use to fill that experience gap so that customers from the very beginning to the very end of their trip have an amazing time. And I'm going to show you data that we've collected real time today to show you how this technology can help you curate experiences from sales to onboarding to uh, live events like this to even post experience feedback so that customers have an amazing time all the way through their travel experience. Okay, so let's start out. Uh, why don't you just ask people? Right. So how much of a good time are you having? Sam, how much of a good time are you having compared to, I don't know, compared to what? Right, yeah, great, what does that mean, right? So if I could ask people how good experience they were having, and that would predict their behavior, I'm done. I'd be happy, right? No problem. What we know is that self-report very poorly predicts individual behaviors and market outcomes. So about 20 years ago, we began measuring brand activity to see if we could predict what people would do, not what they said. So it's nice if you intend to lose 10 pounds, not Sam, you intend to lose 10 pounds uh, this year on your diet, it's better if you do it. Right? So we started doing this work uh, and eventually got funding from DARPA, some other agencies of the US government that wanted to create messages and experiences and understand what they would do to the individuals who were engaged in them. Right? So by measuring brand activity, we can reverse engineer the process. So now I've measured about 50,000 brains in a vast variety of experiences and from that, have been able to derive specific actions that you can take without measuring brand activity so that you ensure that your customers have an amazing experience. So I'm going to set these up in a kind of a simple algorithm. But the key here is that most of what your brain does is unconscious. Maybe 99% is unconscious. So if I ask you about your unconscious emotional experience, what do you say, like Sam? Uh, pretty good compared to what? And Sam's pretty good may be different than, oh gosh, where's Greg? Greg's okay, right? May be different than my sort of good. What do you say, like, compared to what? Compared to my kids? Compared to my dog? My dog's perfect. My dogs never talk back to me, right? So, okay, we just don't know. And it's like asking your liver how much you enjoy lunch. So, well, that's just a stupid question, right? But we sort of have this idea that if I probe you in somehow the right way, the unconscious can be made conscious. Turns out that's not the case. Okay. So oftentimes we measure what's easy to measure, which is attention, clicks, likes, views. And we see that as valuable intel on what people are feeling. But it's not. Right? So attention just opens the door to having an amazing experience. That experience is actually the emotional state, the feeling state that you get. So if I'm attentive and I have this emotional experience, then I'm into this experience. Then I'm really uh, valuing it from a brain perspective. And here's the bad news for all of you. Your brain is a super lazy organ. It takes about 20% of your calories. That's why we have to eat all the time. Think how often we have to eat as humans. All the time we're eating, eating, eating to keep that energy level up. So what your brain wants to do is just cruise. So for us who are uh, creating events, who are executing events, we want to get people out of that homeostasis, is the key word, out of that homeostasis and into like, oh my god, I'm having an amazing experience. How does this happen? When you do that, then you create an extraordinary experience that people value. Okay, so this neurologic state we discovered that I've called immersion captures the attentional response if I'm sleeping, this is not going to be a great experience for me. But importantly, it also captures that emotional resonance. How much does this experience speak to me? So those two things together, immersion, 
is the value your brain places on that experience. And it turns out that when you value that experience, you will want to repeat it, creates a desire to, to uh, do it again. That's customer loyalty. It's something I remember easily, so highly emotional experiences are saved in the brain in a very particular way, and they motivate us to share this experience with others. Right? So when you've had that extraordinary experience uh, with a salesperson during travel at a conference, like, oh, how was Dubai? Amazing. We went to the Museum of the Future. It was crazy interesting. These things happened. Right? So that's what we really want. Right? We want to have people not only have a great experience now, but remember it, enjoy it, and want to repeat it. So because we built this uh, way to measure brain activity backwards, we gave people an experience and saw who had an option to do something, who did something, and who didn't, and compared brain activity. This is a prediction engine. So immersion, this neurologic state, can predict market outcomes with 85 plus percent accuracy. Things like what songs will be hits uh, three months before they're released, uh, movie ticket sales, uh, sales bumps from advertising, on and on and on, because it's that valuation mechanism in the brain. OK, so how do you use this? So there are five components. They have an acronym, because I can't remember anything, so I make ac acronyms. And the acronym is CERTA. If you remember this, like being certain. I can be certain that my customers will have an amazing experience if I follow these five stages. Any Italians here? So after I made this acronym, acronym it turned out there's a little city against the Alps in Italy called CERTA. So a tiny little village of maybe a couple hundred people. So anyway. It's also Italian, so that's also good. We love Italy. OK, so here, let me go through those five stages very quickly and then tell you um, how to use them. So the first is staging. Right? So this is uh, what I call psychological safety. I've got to be comfortable. If I am stressed out, if I'm angry, if I'm hungry, if I'm tired, I'm using bandwidth to be in survival mode and not be immersed in the experience that uh, has been designed for me. So from our perspective, from a designer's perspective, we want to create that staging, that time to just settle down, right? Take it easy, get centered. Famously, uh, Google will do a three-minute eyes-closed meditation before they start a meeting. That's centering, right? Getting myself ready to have this experience. I don't want you to expend all this metabolic energy on, oh my god, I get to get to sleep, or when's my next meal, or all those things that happen during travel. Right, create that, that uh, emotional space and that physical space. So you can do this very easily. First of all, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Paul. How are you? Right? So simple things. Offer them a, a snack, a drink, time. Right? So that customer comes in, we think about being fast and efficient. You want to get out of here? Good. I'm going to book your travel. Everything's going to be good. Settle down. Take it easy. Right? Humans need that time to just get ready and centered. So staging is important so that you have the neural bandwidth to be immersed. The second component is immersion. Now, once you've staged this, I've got bandwidth in my brain. Now I actually want to be fully immersed in the experience. So how do I do that? From a sales perspective and from a presentation perspective, the most immersive way we found to create this experience for individuals is through storytelling. So have that narrative arc. The lazy brain wants to just cruise but if you give me a mystery, give me a crisis, give me authentic emotions, that's a story. Now I'm sucked in. Oh, there's a story going on here. Oh, what's going on with that story? How is it resolved? What's the ending? Does the boy get the girl? Does the com is the conference a success? Uh, do I get home on my airplane? That can be a story, right? So from a sales perspective, the customer comes in, right? He or she wants to book this event for their company, right? Once you've staged it, I'm comfortable. Tell them what that arc of the experience will be like for them, for their attendees. Right? Give them that narrative at human scale. Not logistics. Process is key, for sure. But when you communicate, do it in a story structure. Here's how it will feel for you. Here's how it's going to start. Here's how you're going to um, uh, enjoy the experience. Here's how you'll remember it when you get done. So, that's before event, during event, and after. Each one of those can be a story, so the follow-up is going to be important as well. Right? So once you have that story, 
then you've actually created value inside that customer's head and they want to continue that story and execute that story over and over. So all these are measurable, I should say this, right? So this is not uh, in theory, this is stuff we measure and refine. So this is about constantly refining what you're doing so that the client gets more value out of the experience you're creating. Okay, the third, uh, the R in CERTA is for relevance. Right, I can tell you the story about uh, a client that you never heard of that's in a different industry, or I can tell you a story about people like you. So we're very comfortable, we respond better when the stories are relevant to us. So in the brain, this is called top-down processing. So I can show, new, new mom, who's a new mom? Who was that this morning, who said I'm traveling? Sorry, another blonde-haired lady. Okay, new mom, right? Diapers. You go through diapers like crazy. I can give you a story, an ad, say, about diapers, relevant. My kids are in college, not relevant to me. I might enjoy the little picture of the baby, oh, I have nice diapers, but it's not relevant to me. So she's gonna put more, Maya is gonna put more uh, brain power into processing that story. So from your perspective, right, talk about um, your client is in the, um, I don't know, financial services industry. Awesome, we had a client in financial services, a lot, company just like yours, just like yours, makes me comfortable, and this is what we did for them, I think something like this could work for you, right? So if I craft that into a story, the relevance allows me to have you take more brain power and apply it to what I'm doing. So each of these stages is necessary for that extraordinary experience. Staging, I'm here, I'm ready, I feel comfortable. That immersive story, human scale, here's what's gonna happen, here's the feeling state that you're gonna get from this, and now make it relevant to me, right? Otherwise, it's just a nice story, I'm not gonna devote so many resources. So the brain saves those resources by flushing out irrelevant stories. Even if they're amusing, they're not relevant to me. So diapers, commercials, not relevant to me, at least not yet, unless I have grandkids, maybe, at some point. Okay, so you can use this by having consistent um, branding throughout the entire experience. That can be music, it can be the fonts, it can be the logo, so all those things when I have an immersive story, tag that information as emotionally valuable to me, and when I see that memory uh, creator, then I relive that story. I get extra value from this, right? So staging, immersive experience, live story, post experience, and then now we're at the point of creating this relevant story, it's best for me. Once I have that, then I can begin to think about targeting, right? So for that experience, who are my super fans, right? We can find those neurologically, you can find those behaviorally. Who talks about this, right? Engage those individuals. If you wanna leverage the impact of this experience, the super fans will work for you for free. They love it so much, right? Amazing experience. Let them help you, right? Leverage their energy, their passion, their um, emotion for this experience and begin to customize it. They're also the great, greatest test market because they'll try new things out. Right? So keep that super fan database there and say, hey, we're trying something new. We'd like you to try out this new site, get some new uh, user experience data from us. Um, so these individuals will help you all the way through. They're the people who carry water for you. They're gonna do that work. So engage them as well as you can, okay? And customize. And then lastly, call to action. So as experiences and your lazy brain, they have a kind of wavy pattern. I'm gonna show you data in a second. I'm in, I'm taking a little neural break, I'm back out, I'm down, I'm up. So what we find is that the call to action is most uh, likely to engage in action if it happens at an immersion peak. So as I'm telling this story, I wanna have a point in which it's so compellingly interesting to say, yes, I wanna do this thing, right? So, Think about, again, curating over time what that story looks like. So I'll give you a concrete example. But we have a lot of movie studios that use our technology to, um, to optimize movie trailers. So the movie industry is a funny kind of contractual arrangement in which the distributors of movies get the most money in the first two weeks, those movies are in theaters. So they really need to get butts in chairs the first two weeks, they'll spend about 50% of a movie's production cost on marketing. Big investment. So they've got to get the marketing right. How do you do that? 
test, retest, refine, right? I want to ask people. No, I'd actually rather measure and see what really turns people on, what gets them excited. And so in the movie world, that call to action is half of a narrative arc. Introduce characters, there's a mystery, something is going on, uh, and then a crisis, and then stop. Don't complete the narrative arc. Hold the tension at a high point. My immersion is really high. Oh my God, will the boy get the girl? What happens at the end? Does, the, does James Bond survive? I don't know. Got to buy a ticket to find out. Right? So think of the same thing. As you're telling that story about how you're going to create this amazing experience for your customers, holding that information until now's the time to make a decision. Right? So we often see, for example, in advertising is a nice little story, drop in a logo, and what? Right? So if the story and the product or service being advertised do not correspond with each other, then there's really no reason for me to do anything. It's just an amazing story. Right? But if I can curate this so that I have what I call product story congruence, the story solves the problem of the people in the advertisement, and that call to action happens at a high tension point in the story, high immersion, then I go, oh, my gosh, Guinness beer is the best beer ever because when I want to have fun, I'm going to have a Guinness, for example. Okay. So think about curating that entire experience, again, whether it's during sales or during the event itself. Okay, so this is how you create an extraordinary experience, those five points, staging, immersion, relevance, targeting, and that call to action. Right? So think of a, a corporate conference like this. There is a call to action. We'd like you to do something. Right? Be clear about that. Create it at a, at a time in the event in which I have the opportunity to capture that energy that I put into your brain from creating an extraordinary, extraordinary experience so that you execute that thing. Remembering, acting on that. Thank you so much for listening. It was really great to be here.